Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrass, and welcome back to Let's Play Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves. In the last episode, we completed all of the Master Thief challenges for Episode 5, Dead Men Tell No Tales. And we are now taking on the Master Thief challenges for the final episode. Honor Among Thieves, Episode 6. If you've played Episode 6... You pretty much have a good idea of what the Master Thief challenges for this one are. There's no treasure map one because, well, you didn't do a treasure... Well, act, it's not like you didn't do a treasure map there. We didn't have the treasure map until episode 5 and we still had treasure map challenges for those first four episodes. But you didn't have any ex open world exploration at all in episode 6. So, it's just the same or some of the same missions that you did in episode 6 with the time challenge. And by some, I mean four. You have the Carmelita monster battle at the beginning. You have the tubes where you had to drive the RC car and destroy other enemy RC cars. There's the battle with Dr. M's ship. You now have to do that under time pressure. You have to go through the entire path leading up to the Cooper family riches under a time limit. And of course, you have to face Dr. M while also battling against the clock. So you have these five last Master Seat challenges left to go and once you complete all five of these along with every other master thief challenge you've completed 100 percent of the game so without further ado let's go ahead and get these things out of the way and then i can show off my thoughts on this game once and for all Beauty versus the Beast. For this one, you'll need to take down the giant monster at the beginning of the episode before time runs out. Take care not to stand in one place at the beginning as you shoot the monster's head so the mercenaries don't get thrown at you. Once the platforms leading to the next place to stand show up, remember to press triangle to get out of combat mode and make your way up. For the second phase, continue to shoot at the head while kicking the minions who zip line to you back. When more platforms open up to the platform leading to the third phase, you may have to do a high jump to ensure that you reach the platforms if you don't double jump at the very edge on the way there. For the final phase, you'll need to double jump to avoid the arms as the monster swings at you, and you'll need to double jump straight up to avoid the double-fisted ground pound. As long as you keep shooting at the monster's head while staying on the move, you'll stand a fighting chance. Road Rage. For this challenge, you'll need to destroy 16 enemy cars with Penelope's RC car, and you won't be able to heal any damage you've taken Sorry, through the challenge. When you go after the cars, never ever be directly behind them or in front of them, as you will definitely get shot at and take damage if you do. You'll want to be on the other side of the track and sneak up on the cars from there, then use L2 or R2 to hit them. On the big ramp, let go of the X button when you launch yourself into the air to ensure you land flat on the ground. You'll lose speed, but you won't land upside down and be held up for a few seconds to recover either. If you can sneak up on every car you come into contact with and hit them, you should be able to handle this one just fine.
Dr. M dogfight. For this challenge, I found some interesting shortcuts. To avoid being fired at by the satellites, just stay close to Dr. M. The satellites will miss every time. As for the energy walls, I keep holding down the R button to continuously fire while tapping X to slowly boost my way towards Dr. M. Once I'm lined up with Dr. M, I stop boosting and fire away. I'm surprised I did this on the first try. Ultimate Gauntlet. Welcome to the Ultimate Challenge. Despite the fact that you have a time limit to complete the entire run through the Gauntlet of the Ancestors in the Cooper Vault, you have way more than enough time to complete this one. The best advice that can be given for this one is to practice your way through the vault, take your time, hold the run button down only when necessary, and watch the traps to figure out how to get past them. This challenge is probably the longest and hardest but it is definitely doable.
Nice work, Dad. Battle against time. For this challenge, you'll have to beat Dr. M as quickly as possible, which is what we did in the main game to begin with. First, you'll have to tail Dr. M and latch onto him to force him to fight, then hide underneath the vehicle that shows up so you don't get fried. From here, you'll want to be able to hit him with a level 2 shove attack before he can rush at you or jump into the air, both of which will have you scrambling out of Dr. M's way and getting into position to attack with a level 2 shove without getting hit yourself. After you do enough damage, you'll have to repeat the process. The first phase has the water bubbles that trap you. The second phase has the shockwaves that are not only fired, but also placed on the ground when Dr. M rushes forward or jumps. And the third has the fireballs. You'll want to step to the side before Dr. M shoots the fireballs, then wail on him and keep him from doing things. This battle takes practice, but if you can beat Dr. M here, you've completed the Master Thief challenges. And that is every single Master Thief challenge for Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves. As you could tell if you were paying attention to the lower left corner of the screen, if you were looking in that direction just moments ago, we have a 100% save file, which means we have done everything that we possibly can in Sly 3. Which means that I finally get to do what I forgot to do during the credits and give my thoughts on the third game in the Sly Cooper series. The graphics, they're pretty much what you'd expect if you've played the first two games. You've got the cell shading, you've got the 3D polygons, you've got the animated look for all the 2D cutscenes. Once you've played the first two, you know what to expect as far as how this game looks like. The sound of music is basically the same as Sly 2. You have more appropriate music compared to the first game. It kind of fits the whole sneaking around and stealing things mood that the game has. And once again, like in Sly 2, it does not disappoint. As a matter of fact, the same person who composed the second game also composed the third one. Also forgot to mention on the graphics side of things before I forget. Compared to Sly 2, the third game is a little bit brighter. Especially when you're in the Binocucom conversations. Not sure why that is, but I do like that touch. The play control is the same as ever. If you've played Sly 2, you know what to expect here. I do find it interesting that they found ways to streamline the gameplay experience even more from 2, but a lot of it was not very popular. I actually did some digging on this game as I was playing it. If you know me, you know that I am not a big fan of the, of the clue bottles. Simply because it was just a pain in the butt to find them in each world. Especially when it was in the height of summer and I had the AC on. 
Hence why I couldn't find some of those clue bottles at times. The third game got rid of the clue bottles. So all the moves that you had for this game, you had to learn through ThiefNet. Speaking of ThiefNet, once you steal a treasure from an enemy, it just automatically goes to your gold total. You can't just steal the treasure and then go back to the safe house and then sell it yourself. No, it just automatically goes to your gold total. And while I like that change, it's not as hands-on as it is in the second game. Making it so that the only thing safe ThiefNet is used for is for getting all the special moves. And all those big ticket items on the podium from the second game, those are gone. I wish they weren't, because it would have made looking for gold that much more simple, and would have given me more things to show off, if Sly 2 is any indication. So, even though I like some of the gameplay changes, I do like some of the simplification and the streamlining of the gameplay, it does come at a cost. Getting more gold, getting more coins is expensive. It gets a lot harder to save up for special moves. But at least you don't have to go for the clue bottles. I didn't like the clue bottles, again. But a lot of people did. And not surprisingly, they bring them back in the fourth game. So, get ready to see me get frustrated with the clue bottles again. Should I ever play Sly 4 Thieves in Time? Will I play Thieves in Time? I have a PS3. I can obviously use the capture device that I'm using right now to record a gameplay footage. I just haven't played the game yet. And I'd like to spend some time with the game before I let's play this. Before I let's play the fourth game. So it will happen eventually. Though I'm not looking forward to it because even though it's a pretty good game, I've heard that the writing is not that good compared to the first three games. I may like it. I may like it a little less compared to the PS2 trilogy. We'll see. And once you play through this game, you will have the Master Thief challenges to keep you busy for a while. But once you get through those, and you will eventually get through those you'll probably pop this in and play it through the game all over again. Like, probably several, several months from now. At least you have something that can count as post-game in this game compared to the second game, where it was just, you go through the story, boom, you have 100%. No, you have the Master Thief challenges, and that covers a good amount of the game percentage the game completion percentage the game per per completion percentage I'm trying to say I once again I cannot English so all in all this is a good game if you like the second one but given how minimal the presentation is compared to the second one the streamline the streamlining of the gameplay which you may take issue with at least sly has an adversary other than clockwork to worry about even if he's only in this game and this game only so at least the game has that going for it. Still a good game, but it's a bit of a step back from the second one in terms of how everything is presented. And again, the streamlining of the formula further compared to the second game may, and how it may cause issues for some. You may like the note bottles. You may like the clue bottles. I didn't. More than likely, you probably won't like the removal of the big ticket podium items that the second game had. 
as well as all the coins that you'll have to save up just to get special moves. At least we get some new characters, we get some new good guys, we get some new bad guys, we get some new things to try, try out and do. And we don't have to deal with clockwork for once. So, again, great game. Alright game. But, out of the first three games in the Sly series, two is still the best. This one, a little bit of a step down, because this game came out a mere eight months after the second one. But, if you like the second game, and you wanted more of what the second game gave, you'll probably want to dig into this one. And at this point, I'm just going to be rambling. So this has been Let's Play Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves. Hopefully I'll be back with another game. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be bad. Maybe it'll be somewhere in between. Who knows? Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, and see you guys later.